Hello boys, welcome back to another session of online video tutorials and uh, in this session we are dealing with class 11th biology and uh, in particular unit 1 diversity in the living world. In this unit chapter 1 the living world we have been uh, talking about for the last two days and uh, quickly we review what we have been uh, discussing for the last two days and go to the new concept at the end. So basically we were talking about what is life and uh, what can be defined as a living organism, what are the characteristics of a living organism, all that. So basically life is a, a complicated process that takes place between birth till death of an organism. And uh, during this process, the living organism or organism having life exhibits certain characteristics. And these characteristics are growth, uh, reproduction, metabolism, cellular organization and consciousness. And when we talk of growth, we know that it is, it is a physical quantity. Uh, any organism when it increases in mass and numbers then we say it is growth and this happens because of mitosis cell division so in case of plants division occurs continuously and in case of animals including us only up to certain age animals grow so plants grow throughout life as we have been seeing it and thanks to the special tissue called meristematic tissue that is present in plants which makes the plants to grow throughout their life whereas we don't have that including human beings we don't have meristematic tissue so we can't grow throughout only to certain age we grow and division also enables to replace lost cells. So mitosis always helps in creating new cells. As the new cells take place, the old cells will be uh, removed or worn out. And as and when the old cells are worn out or go out of the body, the new cells will replace them. So in case of even unicellular organisms like amoeba, the division mitosis will increase in number. So basically growth involves increase in body mass whereas in non-living growth with accumulation of material on surface like mountains, boulders, sand mounds it is only they they accumulate the material and show a growth or exhibit growth. Growth cannot be a defining property among living organisms. So conditions when it is observed in living organism when explained characteristics of a living organism. So growth is one of the fundamental characteristics of a living organism. Then comes the second character reproduction. An organism reproduce to progeny similar to them. Basically reproduction is a process in which organisms produce a similar kind. And if they produce similar kind of species again and again, then we say reproduction. We, we must be thankful to reproduction because it helps in uh, continuity of the identity of the species in the given habitat. And basically reproduction can be asexual as well as sexual. So unicellular organisms like amoeba, bacteria, chlamydomonas, they multiply and increase in number and there is no much difference between growth and reproduction in them. Re growth itself is a a reproduction in all this because of mitosis. So it is unclear with the usage of two terms growth and reproduction among unicellulars. It goes side by side or hand, hand in hand. Many organisms do not reproduce like mules, sterile worker bees, bees infertile human couples uh, because of various uh, physiological errors. Hence reproduction is a defining characteristic of a living organisms and as all of us know, non-living organisms do not reproduce. And as we discussed yesterday, under asexual reproduction, there are many types of asexual reproduction and different organisms undergo varieties of types of asexual reproduction. Whereas in sexual reproduction, it is only 
the in case of human beings like father will be 2n what do you mean by 2n n is equal to set of chromosomes like in case of human beings 23 sets so 23 into 2 46 chromosomes so 2n refers to diploid condition or diploid city and the mother also will be diploid that means 23 2 into 23 is equal to 46 in both so 23 pairs we say in that 46 as all of us know 44 will be autosomes and in case of male father it is allosomes x and y or sex chromosomes will be x and y in case of mother it has to be 44 autosomes and there are two x chromosomes which are allosomes so during this fertilization what happens this out of 44 there will be 22 chromosomes during meiosis will come to the zygote out of the x y one will be with the x and another will be with the y so basically a male can produce two types of sperms that is sperm carrying x and sperm carrying y whereas in the case of mother she doesn't have that choice when uh, meiosis takes place out of the 44 22 will come to one ovum on gamete and x and similarly other also so only we say female doesn't have variety the ovum will have same type of chromosomes 22 plus x so the sperm carrying 22 plus x combines with this ovum 22 plus x 44 plus xx the baby will be female and whereas when the sperm carrying 22 plus y chromosomes combines with uh, 22 plus x of the mother's ovum it will be 44 plus xy the baby will be male and diploid is diploid city is <coughs> maintained or retained and further we talked about another important characteristics of living organism metabolism metabolism is the process of combination of i said yesterday anabolism and catabolism and i also said that anabolism means joining together like photosynthesis is an anabolic thing what is that 6 co2 plus h2o giving rise to c6h12o6 that is starch n number of course n times it's glucose glucose n times monomer becoming polymer okay this is joining anabolism whereas uh, catabolism is cellular respiration here look at this glucose is being broken down to co2 plus h2o but in both, both the anabolism as well as catabolism there is a release of energy this energy help uh, help all the living organisms to maintain their life and that is exactly metabolism so there will be many metabolic reactions taking place in all the living organisms so living organisms exhibit metabolism and the fourth characteristic is consciousness living organisms sense their surroundings or environment through stimuli so stimuli can be internal stimuli or external stimuli stimulus singular so the stimulus can be physical stimulus chemical stimulus biological stimulus so organisms sense through sense organs like you have seen uh, you must have touched a very famous plant touch me not okay the moment you touch the plant it shrinks itself so that is stimulus physical stimulus similarly the plants show senses through light through water temperature organisms and pollutants and photo period influence reproduction so you got what is called seasonal breeders both in plants and animals and during particular season only they breed whereas uh, humans of course you know they are aware of not only themselves but the surroundings also which is self-consciousness so consciousness is the defining property of living organisms so sensation of touch sensation of smell sensation of vision sensation of hearing all these senses will make the living organism conscious of the surroundings and 
having all this in the living world there is lot of diversity there is lot of variety why variety this look at that 1.7 to 1.8 million species are surviving on this earth so each of 1.7 to 1.8 million will have its own characteristics its own structure so biodiversity so the term is used to refer to the number of varieties of plants and animals in earth so when there are so many animals and plants next will there will be lot of confusion who is who and what is what so there is a need for classification so living organisms are classified into categories so that they could be named nomenclature i said yesterday they can be remembered they can be studied for further and they can be understood so there is a need to standardize naming of, of the organism so organism named same in all over the world so that every one of us will understand that is called nomenclature giving a name based on characteristics some scientific study so the plants based on the principles and criteria of icbn is a international code for botanical nomenclature that means when we are giving a name to the plant we follow the criteria of icbn similarly when we are giving a name to an animal we follow the criteria of iczn international code for zoological nomenclature zoology study of animals so scientific names ensure that each organism has only one name and thanks to this great gentleman binomial nomenclature was first introduced by carl linnaeus he published the book systema naturae the scientific way of naming an organism using two words is binomial nomenclature each name has two components one is the generic name another is specific name so there are some set of rules to be followed when we are applying this binomial nomenclature basically biological names are generally in latin language and written in italics first word represents a genus second word represents a specific epithet both words of biological name should be underlined separately when handwritten and italics if printed first word denoting denoting genus start with capital letter and uh, specific le epithet or species name should be small letter as we discussed yesterday so the based on this nomenclature we can classify the animals this classification process of classification based on characteristics of a living organism is called taxonomy so external structure that is morphology internal structures that's anatomy cell structure development ecological information all this will form basis for modern taxonomy so human being is interested to know different organisms and diversity along with their relationship with each others this study is called as we said yesterday systematics so systematics deals with classification of organisms based on their diversities and evolutionary relationship among them among them jewels so once we uh, come for the taxonomy we have to arrange the animals as well as plants in a ladder way from top to bottom or ascending order to descending order or descending order to ascending order so taxonomic hierarchy it is the arrangement of various taxa of classification of plants and animals yesterday we said the lowest taxon uh, in, among the taxonomical hierarchy is species and the highest one is kingdom so we start off with the species many species join together and form a genus many genera join together and form a family many families join together make an order many orders join together make a class many classes will be under if it is an animal it is phylum if it is a plant it is division and many divisions will make two kingdoms predominantly plant kingdom or animal kingdom so basically we defined species as a group of individuals having fundamental similarities and successful reproduction among themselves to produce similar kind that's how we define species 
So distinct morphological difference is there between two closely related species. Example, Panthera tigris, Panthera leo. One is tiger, another is lion. But both of them are having the same genera because they share similar characteristics. Similarly, Solanum tuberosum, Solanum nigrum. Again here, it is the potato and the brinjal, but the genus is same, Solanum. So, tigris, leo, tuberosum, nigrum, the specific epithet, species name. Panthera and Solanum is generic name. Next, higher level of taxon. So, genus may have more than one specific epithet represent different organisms as you are seeing in the diagram. So, genus, genera or aggregates of closely related species as we discussed just now, Panthera leo, Panthera tigris, Panthera pardus, that is leopard. So, group of related species with more characters in common than species of other genera. Animals which comes under genus Panthera shares several common features, look at that, and differs from genus Phyllis. Similarly, potato, solanum tuberosum and brinjal, solanum melangena. And then we go to the family. It has a group of related genera with less number of similarities. Characterized on the basis of vegetative and reproductive features. Example, family Solanaceae includes genera solanum, petunia and datura. Family Felidae includes genera panthera lion, tiger, leopard and phyllis. So that means family will have less of uh, the similar characters, similarities. And further many families are kept under order. So assemblies of families which exhibit few similar characters. So similar characters will be less in number in order. So plants, family, convoluacy, solanaceae, order, come under order, polymonials. Animals, family, Felidae and Canidae come under single order, Carnivora. And then class, it includes all related orders having few similar characters. Example, Mammalia, our own class, includes order primates, that is monkeys, gorilla, gibbons and Carnivora. And in case of plants, class Dicotyledonae includes order Polymonials and Sependales, mango, mango class. And many classes join together and make a, either phylum in case of uh, animals and uh, in case of plants, division. It includes classes with very few similarities. That means if you are carefully observed from when we go for the ascending order, species to phylum, as we move up the ladder, the number of characteristics that are similar will be reduced. So phylum card data includes classes fishes, amphibia, reptilia, aeus, mammalia due to common feature. What is the common feature? In all these animals, there is presence of notochord and narrowcard. That is the only character. And division angiosperm includes class dicotyledonae as well as monocotyledonae. And finally, of course, the highest taxon in the taxonomical hierarchy is the kingdom. We have got two, plant kingdom and animal kingdom. Something is to be put under this. It has to be either a plant or a, an animal. So we need to uh, take the help of certain structures called taxonomical aids so that these taxonomical aids help us in building the taxonomy. So taxonomic studies of various species of plants, animals and other organisms know bio resources and diversity. Studies require correct classification and identification, collection of actual specimen of plants and animals. So fundamental to studies and essential for training in systematics, this is required. And specimens are gathered, stored, preserved with information for future studies. So various taxonomical aids uh, which are collected uh, in this fashion, taking all these in our mind are one herbarium, botanical garden, museum and zoological park. So let's see first herbarium and I already have told you in the class you need to do this. What you have to do is collect various uh, uh, leaves of a plant, varieties of leaves 
and uh, put them in between two pages of your notebook and just uh, collect all the leaves keep them in between the two pages and uh, make them dry by keeping some weight on that and then afterwards you stitch that dry leaf and start writing the characteristics of that leaf you will you will be surprised you will be uh, wonderful you will wonderstruck how many varieties of leaves are there in your own garden around your own home so that is herbarium similarly we can do herbarium in, with the flowers also we can do the whole plant also if it is a herbarium so herbarium is a storehouse of collected plant spe specimens that are dried pressed and preserved on sheets and uh, specimens description of herbarium sheet label of date place of collection english local botanical name family collector name this is what the previous batch also done you can also do it quick referral system for taxonomic studies and what about botanical gardens as you visit to the mysore for example botanical garden specialized garden having collection of living specimens all living live specimens will be there plants grow for identification purpose plant is labeled with a botanical or scientific name and family and of course in our campus also we have done whatever plants that are there in each house we have enabled and we have put the heading who am i on each plant and under that who am i we have identified uh, all the taxonomy and important medicinal uses of that plant so this is the easiest way of uh, studying plants and then museum museums have collections of preserved plant and animal specimens they help us in you know, studying the plants and animals as well as quick reference and the setup in educational institutions uh, specimens preserved in containers and jars like we have got in our own biology lab uh, many specimens so plants animals some of them dry insects insect boxes after collection and uh, of course we pin the animals and large animals are stuffed and we have got stuffed animals which are preserved in our lab as you have seen and of course we got skeleton also and then we have got zoological parks zoological parks are the places where wild animals are kept in protected under human care learn food habits and behavior conditions are provided as animals natural habitat so we see next uh, in our session what is key with an example i will explain you what is this key and analyze